Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Return Policy. So on today's episode, I kind of wanted to finish the kind of the celebration of the uh, one-year launch of the Nintendo Switch by also providing a list of not five, but the four uh, most disappointing uh, Nintendo Switch accessories that uh, this channel, my channel, has reviewed over the past year. And so very similar to my five favorite accessories uh, video that I did previously, I uh, wanted to follow the exact same criteria using the uh, price, the overall practical value, and finally, is this uh, accessory a potential risk for your uh, Nintendo Switch console? And as usual, this is all kind of a personal preference and just my uh, opinion. And so if any of these accessories that I've described on this list of four that you've actually gotten really good value and no problems with, by all means, uh, you came out much better as a result uh, than I did when I did my reviews for these uh, accessories. So first on this list is an actual accessory that Nintendo had produced uh, around the time of the launch, if not exactly around the time of the launch of the Nintendo Switch. And in this case, it is the uh, Nintendo Switch Joy-Con charging grip. And so if you had bought the uh, your console and you noticed all the little accessories, there was a, a little grip that your Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons can slide into so you wouldn't have to hold them separately so you could choose to hold them in a more traditional uh, controller fashion and Nintendo had sold uh, included this one with the Nintendo Switch but they had sold a separate one that allowed you to plug in your uh, your charging grip into the Nintendo Switch or anything that supports a USB-C uh, charging and it allowed you to charge your Joy-Cons while you're using the grip. And so my uh, initial reaction was, oh cool, so there's an actual battery that's included so you can actually charge your Joy-Cons while they're away from the console itself. Well, after a little bit more reading and um, some reluctant testing, I found out that the, the charging grip does not have a battery included. Uh, it's in the name, <laughs> it says charging, not a battery pack, but Unfortunately, yeah, this accessory uh, only holds it as a controller as well as lets you plug in the USB-C and only charges the uh, the battery but does not hold the charge itself. Uh, there was an accessory that had that feature, but in this particular one that Nintendo produced, it was just essentially a USB-C uh, pass-through to allow you to charge your Joy-Cons but not necessarily hold a charge for your Joy-Cons. And so... Uh, I wish they had included this in the Nintendo Switch itself. I don't know how much they were saving by not just having this accessory. It would have been really good to actually let you charge this away from your console. But from my initial reaction of, oh, cool, it can actually hold a battery charge to, oh, it only just allows you to plug in something so you still have to be tethered to a plug or an actual battery pack. The value versus the cost um completely went out of whack and i thought oh this is not even worth it at all i can just plug it into the switch and let it charge anyway and the joy cons themselves they hold a really good charge so that's why uh the nintendo uh joy con charging grip uh is on this list so next on this list is one of these prime examples of third party uh, accessory makers trying to throw everything they can on the wall to see what sticks and if they see a slight issue with a certain console in this case for the nintendo switch they'll say oh hey let's go ahead and create something and see if we can sell a couple hundred thousand of them before people uh, realize it's not really that useful and kind of expensive <laughs> and so the next one on this list is actually the uh the nyko kickstand that uh, nyko produced for the nintendo switch so early on when uh, a lot of the venues were doing reviews for the nintendo switch one of the biggest complaints was the uh, the kickstand and rightfully so it was kind of flimsy and you could accidentally breathe on Nintendo Switch which would cause <laughs> the Nintendo Switch console to fall over and so Nyko thought they could go ahead and create this uh this kind of metal kickstand with a cool little gimmick that will hold an extra micro SD card well in theory and in regular practice yeah it actually works pretty well um, from my own kind of informal testing, it's 
kind of worked. You can still kind of accidentally tap it and it would fall over. It's not that much more sturdy. The gimmick is that it kind of sticks out. It has really nice uh, Nyko branding when you look at it as well as the extra micro SD card holder. Well, as best as those gimmicks work for it. The micro SD card was not that easy to remove. Um, on my pre previous review, I had a heck of a time just trying to use my fingernail to scratch that sucker out. And also from another uh, commenter that mentioned a side effect of using the Nyko kickstand. And if I hadn't read that comment, I would not have uh, noticed that the pressure that the kickstand creates actually damages your uh, console itself. And it shows up on mine where my actual kickstand is now a heck of a lot more flimsy and it does not click in to the console. So if it opens up a little bit, it'll swing out. And... For that reason, yeah, this uh, the Nyko kickstand does a lot more harm than it uh, originally intended. <laughs> or at least a lot more harm than the good it was originally intended for. So next on the list is actually an accessory from a, a really good uh, third party company, Hori. And they created something called the Hori Pad Wired Controller for the Nintendo Switch. And so this also addresses a lot of the early issues that uh, folks had with the Nintendo Switch in terms of the left Joy-Con. Uh, the D-pad, or if they mentioned it as a D-pad, wasn't truly a D-pad, but just kind of the uh, four up, down, left, right buttons. And it did not give that truly D-pad <laughs> kind of feel to it. And so when I saw this one announced by a really good third-party company known for their uh, fighting game um, controllers, their fight sticks, and I wanted to give this one a shot. And so all in all, when I did plug it in and use it, it didn't really have that feel of good quality, especially for the amount of money that you're spending on it. Unfortunately, the gimmick itself, which allows you to replace the D-pad portion with an actual uh, cross uh, traditional D-pad and kind of hide it in the back of the controller. Um, it didn't make things that much more uh, easier or much more fluid than using a D-pad. It's probably more for personal preference, but still for the price that they were charging at the time. And it felt just really light and the construction doesn't necessarily feel like it was rushed, but it wanted to hit that uh, niche, that market as best as it can. And um, something that I've noticed a lot with these wired controllers and still uh, personal opinion is that since the console itself is relatively light and you have just a docking station with the USB ports compared to a larger more heavier console like your PlayStation 4s or Xbox Ones if the USB plug gets yanked off or somebody trips on it heaven forbid you know at least on those larger heavier consoles you might have the ch uh, chance of it just kind of popping out but say using a wired controller on a Nintendo Switch, if you pull that sucker out or trip over it or somebody gets a little bit too um, anxious, you might just throw the whole console in the air with it uh, because the console itself is so light and so there's nothing really tying down the console or at least not much weight. And so I am kind of nervous with these kind of uh, wired controllers. If you're sitting on your desk and it's there, that's fine. But if you want to play it out, in your living room or things like that uh, just be careful and with that nice peace of mind that you're not going to be yanking your console across the floor anytime soon and so last on this list of uh, my four most disappointing accessories that I've reviewed for the uh, Nintendo Switch um, that honor goes to the uh, the Nyko Power Pack and so the Nyko Power Pack is actually a pretty good product with a pretty good gimmick with horrible horrible execution <laughs> in my opinion still and so when I purchased this guy it had the um, concept of being able to attach to your Nintendo Switch console allow you to charge it and hold that battery charge and so let's use the kickstand has a good charge still charges through uh, USB-C everything worked great and so from what I've experienced from my my review was that 
something was wrong with the charging and it might have been just my model but it was just enough to make me freak out and so even though the power pack was charging the nintendo switch console it would turn itself off and i would have to read the instructions and turn it back on to let it charge and then it would turn back off and i would turn it back on and you know so forth just like you would use a normal regular battery pack and so finally when i was kind of um then with that kind of the testing phase i removed the the console out of the power pack and when i plugged it back into just a regular dock or even the regular um, nintendo USB C adapter the console my nintendo switch stopped uh recognizing those plugs and so i would test it plug it in test it and even on the uh, regular nintendo ac adapters or even the dock it would not work um I only really only use the Nyko Power Pack and the Nintendo accessories at, at this point. And so naturally I thought, oh, something's going on with this Power Pack. And so I wasn't able to get it to recognize the first party uh, Nintendo charger until I did a hard uh, reboot of the console. And whew, thankfully, and even now, since you can't easily back up all of your save data from your Nintendo Switch, I was able to get it to recognize and so that alone that experience alone scared me away from trying to test out this uh this charger or this power pack ever again and so this gave me this entire cloud of uh skepticism about using any of these third-party uh charging accessories or anything that has to interface with the usb-c connector on your nintendo switch and so unfortunately the concept was good the idea was good. Even the design was pretty good on the, the power pack. But, oh boy, <laughs> you do not want your uh, Nintendo Switch either bricking or, you know, flat out bricking simply because you just bought a battery pack uh, for your console. And without, like I said, a decent way of backing up all your save data and all the hours and hours that you spend on these games like I have, I'm not going to take that chance and I will stick to what I know works for now <laughs> until something either comes along the way or uh, a better solution from Nintendo to back up your save data. All right, everybody, that's it for me this time. I just wanted to say a very, very huge thank you for taking the time to watch this video and also a big old thanks for Nintendo for creating such an awesome console and being able to actually celebrate <laughs> a one-year um, launch anniversary for their console, which is really good. And also allowing all these third-party uh, companies to make such a wide variety of accessories that allows me to review them and to let you know if it's worth keeping or returning them. But again, I just want to say thanks to everyone that's been watching, supporting, commenting. It's been great. And if you thought this was informative, go ahead and hit that like button. If all of these suggestions were an obvious no-brainers and you've already avoided them like you should, <laughs> go ahead and hit that dislike button. Otherwise, I'm still planning on sticking around for the uh, semi-long run to create more of these reviews, maybe even doing some more of these um, lists. But hey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.